Good morning, everybody. On behalf of uh, AMVETS Post 7, welcome to today's Pearl Harbor ceremony. Uh, my name is uh, Mike Hurt, and I will be your master's uh, ceremonies. Uh, just qu a few quick uh, housekeeping rules. Please turn your cell phones off, and then the uh, restrooms are located directly in the back of the hall. Envision in your head. It was a beautiful Sunday morning. A gentle ocean breeze. It's just, it's just rolling through. The pace was slow. Some soldiers were eating breakfast. Some sailors were eating breakfast. Others slept. Um, it was Saturday night, so a few folks probably went out and uh, were sleeping in as well. And you know what? The place, the place was the American Naval Base at Pearl Harbor near Honolulu, Hawaii. The time was 7.55 a.m. and the date was December 7th, 1941. Unbeknownst, the United States of America would be soon forced on the road to war. The planes of Imperial Japan soon filled the skies over Pearl Harbor. Bullets and bombs, havoc rained down upon the ships. And all the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor crippled or destroyed 18 American ships and nearly 300 airplanes. Dry docks and airfields were targeted as well. Names such as the USS California, USS Oklahoma. USS West Virginia, USS yes, Utah, USS Maryland, USS Pennsylvania, and the USS Arizona. Their names, their names will forever be seared within our memory. It's estimated over 2,400 people died and well over thousands were wounded. Let's bring this home a little bit. Over 200 Wisconsinites were present that day. 56. 56 Badgers were killed. Now let's bring this a little closer to home. Everything's local. Three local service members made the ultimate sacrifice. Gunners made third class Raymond Nusser, United States Navy, US, USS Arizona and ship's cook, second class, William Udys, United States Navy, and Douglas Dykoff, signalman, first class, United States Navy. Both were assigned to the USS Utah. On this anniversary date of December 7th, 2022, the 81st, 81st anniversary, let us gather today, and we gather as a community to reflect, to ponder, to pray, and to honor the sacrifice of all, all who served that faithful day of December 7th, 1941. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna ask uh, Julie Hurt, who is the chaplain for AMVETS 4, uh, District Auxiliary, if she could uh, please provide the invocation Please stand if you are able and uncover, and let us bow our heads. Chaplain. Dear God, not everything that happens in your world reflects goodness and grace. You have given us freedom to choose, and with that freedom, sometimes we choose to do evil. Today, we remember a time of great evil in our world. We remember Pearl Harbor. We also remember those who stood their ground against great evil, those who fought here at home and on the battlefronts to ensure that the evil would not prevail. We thank you that in the hour of need, you gave men and women the strength to resolve, to stand, whatever the cost. May those brave souls who still remain here with us feel today your hand of favor and strength. It is their last years here on earth. Give them renewed hope and awareness of our gratitude, of their bravery and sacrifice. May we never forget 
May you honor them according to the grace you gave in those days and according to their response to that grace. Then and now, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Chaplain Julie. At this time, uh, singer-songwriter Frankie Mascoto, uh, she is a past American Idol Golden Ticket winner, will lead us in the uh, uh, Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem. And uh, she is a 20-year-old professional musician and well-known for singing patriotic song and has sing the anthem at Packer Games, Bucks Games, Miss Wisconsin, and the White House. So we are very blessed to have her today. So I will turn it over to Frankie. So. And slip. And at this time, uh, our very own Angie Hill, first vice commander for Post 7, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Angie is a United States Air Force veteran. I got that right this year? You did. I did good, all right. So at this time, uh, we'll turn it over to Angie. Okay. Hand salute. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Uh, everybody get, uh, grab a seat. And uh, part of today marking the occasion, a uh, very special time, and we will have the laying of the wreath, and um, that will be uh, Jeff Bedward, who is the commander of post seven AMVETS, and Ann Palm is our president. And so again, uh, what, if you could please stand. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> We're getting our PT this morning. And uh, if you could come forward, president and commander, Thank you so much. Now, now you can grab your seat. <laughs> OK. Uh, now we're going to have a next portion. Uh, this is kind of a, a neat thing. Uh, Frankie is going to lead us in the song Remembering Pearl Harbor. Um, where'd you go, ma'am? OK, there she is. And she also uh, has been very kind that she has donated some of the music sheets um, for today's program. So we really appreciate that. And I will turn it over to you. History in every century records an act that lives forevermore. We'll recall, as things to life we fall, the thing that happened on Hawaii shore. Let's remember. Let's remember Pearl Harbor. 
Well, that'll get the heart kicking. <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of interesting. Been doing this for a while, and, and uh, many of you remember the um, late great Doc Sunlightner, and that was my first involvement with the Pearl Harbor program. And I was asked the question yesterday, and it really kind of hit me. And uh, I was at, I was interviewed, and I was posed the question that yes, this is the 81st commemoration. And do you see this someday going to the wayside? And I thought about it and was like, no, no, it never will. And, and I think a good example is today. You could remember back in the day uh, when it was Pearl Harbor Day, a lot of times we'd have Clyde Stevenson come in. And what an incredible guy. I mean, Clyde would share his story. And uh, I mean, I got to tell you, I mean, I, I felt like I was hanging out with Elvis, you know, I mean, he just, it just was a, a star to me. And then time happened and, and he passed. But what I've seen occur is, yes, there, there are not many Pearl Harbor survivors, but I'm seeing their children are carrying the baton now. I'm seeing the daughters and I'm seeing the sons. And I'm hoping that when we hit that 100th anniversary, we're going to see the grandchildren are sharing the stories that great grandpa, grandpa shared. And a, a real good example is today, our, our guest speaker today is uh, Wayne Amburn. Uh, Wayne is a past AMVETS uh, state commander. He's also a Vietnam veteran. And uh, he was stationed in uh, Da Nang in uh, Chu Lai. His uh, duties were uh, with a mortar crew at the fire base, and he went out on patrol with an M60 machine gun. Wayne and I were talking before, and as a military guy, I got to highlight it, he's got the CIB. And to me, as, as a soldier, the CIB, that is like the gold medal. You know, that is the award that says, hey, you know, you exchanged fire with the enemy. And so with us, we have a warrior. And it is a real honor that uh, Wayne is going to speak with us. But his dad is a Pearl Harbor survivor. And we are given the opportunity today that, yes, the, these warriors of old have passed, but their stories are going to keep going. And we are never, ever, ever going to forget December 7th, 1941. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to Wayne Amborn. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning. I'm Wayne Amborn, and as he stated, a Vietnam combat veteran. Needless to say, I was not at Pearl Harbor 81 years ago, but my father, Glenn William Charles Amborn, was. He was very seldom did he talk about it, but one day after I returned from Vietnam, we sat down and he told me his story. My father enlisted in the Army Air Corps during peacetime, not knowing that very shortly after that he would be in for the duration. My father was stationed at Hickam Field where his job or MOS was to load armament onto the planes. The base had been on alert for two weeks, but on December 6th, the alert was canceled and they were ordered to bring the planes out of hiding and line them up on the runway for an, an, an ensuing per, uh, inspection. They had been scattered around the base under netting to camouflage them but they were told to line them up on the runway. That same night, a wealthy Japanese banker 
held a party for the officers in the officers club. Coincidence? You be the judge. On December 7th, my father had been given the duty to work kitchen patrol, or KP, in the officers' mess. Needless to say, not many officers came in that morning for breakfast, so the head cook determined that there was not a need for as many personnel in the kitchen as were there. So he let some of them go. My dad was one of them. My dad was, uh, that was approximately 7.30 a.m. One of the preliminary targets of the Japanese was the mess halls and barracks to prevent pilots from getting airborne. That is why they picked that particular time table that morning. Less than a half an hour after my dad left the officer's mess hall, a bomb was dropped in the kitchen where he had been working, killing all that were present. A close call for my dad, to say the least. Hearing the commotion, my dad and a buddy of his exited their barracks and he said the skies were black with planes darting one way or another. They decided to go to the runway and see if they could arm some planes to counter the attack. A pilot asked them to help get planes in the air. They ran across the runway, my dad's buddy a few feet behind him. A Japanese plane strafed the runway, killing my dad's buddy. A second close call. The third came in a few minutes. My dad pulled the chocks from the wheels of a fighter and the plane started to taxi to the airstrip. A couple Japanese planes strafed the fighters that were all in a row. That must have been a pretty sight for them to see. It, they damaged all of them in one clean swipe. The taxi plane was also hit and started on fire. No planes got airborne from Hickam Field. My dad then manned an anti-aircraft weapon, keeping several planes busy. He said he does not think he shot any down or hit any, but he hoped that he kept them away from other airmen, possibly saving some lives. The attack lasted 90 minutes. All in all, 188 planes were destroyed with another 157 damaged. 189 servicemen were killed at Hickam Field that morning with another 303 wounded. Six planes did get airborne, not from Hickam, but two from Hialeah and four from Wheeler Fields. Two of the pilots were credited with six planes shot down. We lost a total of 2,335 service personnel with an additional 1,143 wounded. The Japanese lost 129 servicemen. My dad, after helping clean up Hickam Field, spent time in Guadalcanal, Panama, and later in the Philippines. He lived to the ripe old age of 93 and passed on in 2010. This is his story as he told to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wayne. I, I just, uh, yeah, I'm sitting back here listening. I just, uh, I was just in awe, and it, it hit my heart. And uh, and I thank you for being here today, and to be able to share this because the story needs to be told. Yes, it does. And uh, thank you so much. We're lucky to have him. Let's give him another round of applause. Wow. At this time, we're going to have a very special moment, and we will read the names of those Wisconsinites 
that died at Pearl Harbor along with the tolling of the bell. Uh, this will be conducted by Angie Hill, AMVETS Post 7 Senior Vice Commander, along with the students from Valley Christian School. And I think this is really great that uh, we have the young people involved. And again, to, for you to be able to share the story that you heard today, I think is very important. And again, let us remember those who made the sacrifice. So Angie and then uh, Dan, if uh, you guys take it from here. Leo Dever Amundsen, Private, Marine Corps, USS Arizona. Leroy Kenneth Barber, Fireman, First Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. Malcolm John Barber, Fireman, First Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. Randolph Harold Barber, Fireman, Second Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. Walter Robert Bovio, Aviation Machinist Mate, Second Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Lawrence Anton Boxrucker, Fireman, Second Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. William G. Bruiswitz, Seaman, First Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. Robert P. Buss, Jr., Corporal, Army, Wheeler Field. Malachi J. Cashin, Corporal, Army, Wheeler Field. Keith Richard Canale, Hospital Apprentice, First Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. Gerald Clinton Cox, Musician, Second Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Lyle Carl Curtis, Radioman, Second Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Frederick Curtis Davis, Ensign, Navy Reserve, USS Nevada. Douglas R. Dykoff, Signalman, 3rd Class, Navy, USS Utah. Kenneth E. Dorenenberg, Fireman, 1st Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. Elmer Edwin Dreffall, Corporal, Marine Corps, USS Oklahoma. Casper Alert, Signalman, 3rd Class, Navy, USS Utah. Arnold E. Field, Private, Army, Hickam Field. Leslie Henry Fisher, Seaman, 1st Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Lawrence Henry Funk, Seaman, 1st Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Philip Robert Gazecki, Ensign, Navy Reserve, USS Arizona. Marvin Frederick Giese, Seaman, First Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Harvey Ralph Hansen, Seaman, First Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Helmer Ansel Hansen, Seaman, Second Class, Navy, USS California. Alfred Grant Heath, Seaman, First Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Paul Edward Herrick, Private, Marine Corps, USS Arizona. Daryl Miller Hess, Fire Controlman, First Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Fred Albert Hilt, Machinist Mate, First Class, Navy, USS West Virginia. David William Jackson, Ensign Navy Reserve, USS Utah. William Arthur Judes, Ships Cook Second Class, Navy, USS Utah. Joseph Nicholas Carbon, Fireman First Class, Navy, USS Utah. Roderick Otto Clubertons, Private Army, Hickam Field. Harry Wellington Kramer, Fireman First Class, Navy, USS California. Neil Stanley Lewison, Fireman, Third Class, Navy USS Arizona. Charles Harris Matson, Seaman, First Class, Navy USS Arizona. 
Vernon Murford Manny, Fireman, First Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Herbert E. McLaughlin, Private, Army, Hickam Field. Joseph Alexander Muhovsky, Radioman, Third Class, Navy, USS Pennsylvania. George Eugene Nagel, Seaman, First Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. Laxton Gale Newman, Aviation Machinist Mate, Third Class, Navy, Kanaohe, NAS. Frank Edward Nichols, Fireman, First Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. Raymond Alfred Nusser, Gunner's Mate, Third Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Thomas S. Flipsky, Private First Class Army, Hickman Field. Donald D. Plant, Private Army, Wheeler Field. <coughs> Alexander J. Priv is Printer, Second Class, Navy, USS California. David Joseph Riley, Seaman, Second Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. Halvor E. Rognes, Private Army, Hickman Field. Robert R. Shattuck, Private First Class, Army, Wheeler Field. Edward, Edward Frank Zorgat, Storekeeper, Third Class, Navy, USS California. Arthur Ray Thines, Seaman, Second Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. Ralph Egbert Tuttle, Fireman, Second Class, Navy, Midway Island, NAS. Andrew Curtis Yernholt, Ensign, Navy Reserve, USS Arizona. Franklin Van Valkenburg, Captain, Navy, USS Arizona. Robert N. Walkawake, Fireman, Third Class, Navy, USS Oklahoma. James Frank Wallace, Seaman, First Class, Navy, USS Arizona. Albert Derbert Wallen, Private First Class, Marine Corps, USS California. That, that just hit me because um, those were a lot of people from Badger State. Every one of them had dreams, they had hopes, they had things that they wanted to do, get married, have a home, family, a life, and they lost their lives December 7th, 41. So today we honor them as well. At this time, I would like to uh, invite uh, uh, Chaplain Julie back up here to provide the benediction. Uh, stand if you're able. Uh, please uncover and bow your head. So, Chaplain Julie. To our Heavenly Father, you are a great and loving God. As we depart, we ask your continue and faithful light fall upon our brothers who made the supreme sacrifice at Pearl Harbor. May they rest in peace, and may our nation never forget December 7th, 1941. May we be worthy of their sacrifice and those of our future generations. We ask your blessing upon the country. May we always strive for peace and justice. May our causes always be noble and divine in nature. May we always choose good over evil. We ask that our hand watch over our current armed forces, keep them out of harm's way, and may their strength ensure peace and stability throughout the world. Lastly, as we depart today's ceremony, we ask that you watch over us as we depart safely to our next destination, and that we be positive inspiration to others. In our Creator's name, amen. amen. At this time, the United Veterans Honor Guard, led by Commander Norm Schutz, will conduct the rifle salute. And Kent Walker will do taps as well.
and salute. And at this time, if everybody can uh, grab a seat, and we'll start to wrap this up a little bit. Great job, Ken. Thank you so much. President Delano, or Franklin Delano Roosevelt stated the day after Pearl Harbor, yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. 81 years later, today in 2022, we still view the attack at Pearl Harbor as a critical turning point in the history of our nation. It was a true gut check. It was a true gut check of the character of this country. What we learned is that the American people, we have a strong sense of fair fairness and morality. However, when provoked this nation, it has an iron resolve and a tenacity that is unmatched around the world. The lesson of Pearl Harbor is this. It's that of eternal vigilance. We can't ever think the impossible cannot occur, and we can never underestimate our enemies. However, despite the horror, despite the darkness of that day, we pushed forward. We pushed forward into the future and further solidified as a nation. It demonstrated the clarity of our light the dignity of this country, the courage, and the power, the power of the American people. Now, to the modern-day revisionists of American history who believe the atomic bombs never should have been dropped at Hiroshima by the U.S., I say this to you. Without a Pearl Harbor, there never would have been a Hiroshima. We didn't start this war but through the heroism of the American Armed Forces and the courageous World War II veterans, we surely ended it. And again, we are seeing a transition occur, and we are a part of that, but we have an ownership and we have a responsibility. Wayne came up here and he told the story of his father. We have to go out and we have to tell that story. This day cannot be forgot. And so that we carry within our hearts today. In closing, I'd like to thank AMVETS Post, to se Post 7 for sponsoring today's event, uh, the Elks Lodge for allowing us to host it here. Kent Walker did a phenomenal job, as always, with TAPS. The United Veterans uh, Honor Guard for the rifle salute, very awesome. Wayne, thank you. It was very superb. It was a very touching speech. Wow. That, that's all I can say. I, I got it, folks. One more round of applause for Wayne for being here today. He actually, uh, once he wraps up here, he uh, is going to be in Milwaukee this evening, and he does a presentation as well there, so he keeps it going. Uh, our very own uh, Frankie Moscato, we thank you for being here, Frankie. Uh, did a phenomenal job. And um, also to mention, we support those who support us. And besides Frankie donating some of the programs for today, she also has an event December 16th at the Time Theater. 
and uh, tickets are available. So please, again, we support those who support us, so let us go there. And uh, park, I need to share with, we got these wonderful brochures today, programs. Park and Print donated those, no cost to us. And uh, uh, Senior Vice Commander Hill, great job as always. And the, the Valley Christian School, thank you. It was really neat to see you here. Thank you so much. I, it's, it's a little unnerving to go before this group of people and, and, uh, and uh, to be able to speak, but you, you folks did a fantastic job. And again, thank you so much, Dan. And lastly, thank you. Thank each and every one of you for being here today. Your being here, your being here, it honors, it honors the people of December 7th, 1941. And you, and you, and you back there, you ensure that the memory of their sacrifice, it will live on. It will live on. And uh, one other event to, to remember uh, to share today is my understanding, 10 o'clock. At the firehouse, there will be a uh, dedication of a plaque for uh, firefighters that have uh, been deceased while battling flames and then also recognizing those veterans. So that will be at the firehouse headquarters, 10 o'clock today. And uh, the only other thing is once we wrap up, if those participants could gather up front and we'll get a quick photo in front of the flags. So this concludes today's program. Refreshments are in the back. Everybody, please stay safe today. Stay warm. And you know what? God bless America. Thank you.